Hello, my name is Andy here at Farm and Fixing and Fabricating. Welcome to the channel. What we have behind us here is a silage box that I've been building for a few weeks now. And what we need to do is address a few of the uh, advisements that I have received in the comment section here. We're not going to call them complaints, we're just going to call them advisements. Um, apparently I need to show more of what we are constructing here. Um, I should not be going into talking about maybe putting the uprights up and then going into the next frame and you see all the uprights put up in the air. Uh, what we can do, we can slow this down to a dull roar here and we can show you every intricate part, every step that is. And this video series uh, would have probably taken about 40 or 50 videos to explain every little step. Everything from going from cutting the metal to placing the metal, how I placed it, how I got the metal square. Um, I don't have time to do that. I try to strategically video what we're videoing to give you guys an idea and 99.9% .9 of you understand that. So with that uh, little bit of business out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the video here. All right, now that we've gotten that awkward intro out of the way, we can go ahead and show you what we've got done on this silage box here. Just a short little bit that we've done on it here today uh, from what we had done in the last video. All I basically did is get the cylinder tabs welded on top and bottom and then we went ahead and put some hydraulic hose holders on each side um, of the silage box just to kind of neatly tie them hoses up just so they're not you know going back and forth maybe taking the paint off all we basically have left to do here is to install the tailgate locks thought i would show you this tailgate arm design here what we end up doing is we end up coping out this uh arm itself we have the tailgate tapered and we come into this arm about an inch and then we leave the, the arm a little long back here and then we just fold that around to kind of cap our air gap or our opening of the tube uh, itself. We use one inch bolts for our uh, hinge and we end up just putting a regular nut on there and I just weld the nut to the bolt we don't want that coming off in there and then i of course put a bolt stop on that other side and we also have our greaser installed in the end of the tube you can just about see that from here right here and then this is what the gate looks like from the other angle here. So let's go ahead and get this raised up in the air and uh, make it so we can crawl in underneath the body itself. All right, we have the box up in the air so that I can get in underneath it and uh, do the pneumatic locks and the mechanical locks. I've got to cut a hole in the back of this light panel here. Now, I have already uh, got the hole put into the long sill uh, where the rod is gonna go across. And we'll show you that as we go along here. Uh, this part of the build, doing the tailgate and putting the lock assembly on is probably the most fun part of this whole build that I like doing on these uh, silage bodies. You have to have, everything has gotta be precise. It's not just about 
throwing tubes up and throwing up sheet metal and whatever. Now the rest of it, forward has got to be perfect as well. Um, I have had problems in the past with warping top rails, warping bottom rails, warping sills, all that stuff. But as you can see here, everything is just as straight as an arrow. We're looking down the rub rail right now. Now granted, it's going downhill towards the front, but it is just as straight as can be. I have had, in the past, I have had these uh, boxes warp, and um, I have learned to overcome that, and I can't tell you exactly what to do because that's kind of a secret, you know? That's kind of a trade secret, but we're not really we are not at all in the production uh setup of these boxes when these factories build these boxes everything is built on a jig they have uh the sidewalls they're not building them like we're doing for the most part it's all stamped steel but they're doing the sides they're building them kind of like a uh, framer would build a house they build the wall on the floor and then they stand it up and so on and so forth we can't do that just because of how the metal moves and we have to know that ahead of time and being that we're individually building each and every piece we have to understand that and i have discovered different ways of getting around the warpage of steel from welding and what have you the tailgate for example that rear post on the tailgate is perfectly parallel to the rear post on the silage box and Sarah has a complete weld up this upright on this tailgate on both sides and both sides are choop, tight parallel with each other um, i have seen where these gates have had enough of a gap in them to where you could stick your hand right in between the gate post itself and the rear post on uh, the body Another thing we have is this bottom rail. I've seen this bottom rail shape, be shaped like that. In other words, you could stick your hand right up in between the bottom of the tailgate and this taillight panel. So everything is, is uh, tight. Everything is where it needs to be now. What we're getting ready to do now is put the pneumatic locks in. We're going to have one on the left, one on the right. These are buyer's product uh, latches. Uh, these latches here, I have actually modified them because we're actually doing something different with them than what they're actually designed to do. These pneumatic locks here would be on, say, a um, dump truck body, a dirt dump truck body. And what they do is on the dirt dump truck bodies, they have a larger uh, rear post design here. And they actually have this lock assembly. Uh, which way is it going, I think? I want to say, yeah, we're actually going to be going to be mounting it upside down. But they have their gate uh, latches mounted in this way. You, all of you are familiar with seeing this assembly right here, just like that on a uh, dirt box. We have taken and cut off this bottom leading edge because we're actually going to be mounting it upside down and we're going to be putting our latch assembly in the center of the 
the body and everything is in reverse this is something that I guess I kind of designed it on my own um, just to get it to work with uh, this particular style of silage body now uh, USA body has another design he has a nice design on his to where he has a hydraulic cylinder uh, on the side of the body and um, some tabs come up against uh, the bottom of the tailgate and this hydraulic assembly is incorporated in with the um, hydraulic cylinders that raise the tailgate so you have to leave your PTO uh, in gear you gravity you let the tailgate come down gravity and then as soon as the tailgate comes down you power the tailgate in the downward motion and after your tailgate is down it reverts oil into this mechanism that locks uh, the tailgate it's a nice design however it is incorporated in with the lift cylinders on the gate and what we're doing here is we're incorporating a system we're not incorporating but we're a, we're building a system we have a system built that has a pneumatic cylinder and you can either choose to have it locked or unlocked and it is separate from the hydraulic part of the lifting uh, mechanism of the tailgate and by cutting this uh, leading edge off I've got this is a complete latch here and now I have the latch taken apart because we need to cut a hole in that light panel sill so that we can um, mount it kind of neatly and flush flush and whatever uh, to get this uh, c-shaped piece in there being that this piece is cut off if the operator forgets to unlock the mechanism what will happen is he will go to raise the tailgate and when the tailgate raises it will actually lift up some and when it lifts up some it will bring that uh, latch you'll see the mechanism that I'm going to make here it'll lift that up out of this thumb and when it brings it up out of this thumb it will just open the tailgate without having if in the event that they forget to unlock this it'll open it without damaging anything for the most part the hydraulic system for the tailgate has a relief set at anywhere from 12 to 1500 psi and to be honest with you there's really not enough hydraulic force there to wreck anything if the tailgate doesn't open being that there's material in the box that's pushing against the tailgate it's causing the tailgate to want to move straight back so we're going to have a this latch assembly is going to be an over center design so that when a pneumatic cylinder works the more force that's put on the straight uh, backwards force of the gate it's actually going to put more force on that thumb to keep it locked and when you run the lock assembly after it's locked you can take the air cylinder out and being that it's an over center design a cam over design uh, it's not going to matter uh, what you have to hold this lock assembly lock because it's going to be cammed over we'll show you that uh, as we get farther along in this build here but I've rambled on too freaking long so we need to cut that uh, cut that system out there and then I already have the uh, well, that's where the rod is going to go through and then the linkage assembly will be mounted on the here 
and it, you'll see all that. I've, I've rambled on too long. Too long. That's why these videos are getting out of hand. I apologize. Uh, let's get cotton. Well, we have everything done as far as welding goes on this box. I've got the tailgate locks on here. We've got a set of manual locks, turnbuckle style uh, manual locks for when you're hauling something like grain or something and you wanna make sure that the pneumatic locks don't accidentally open up. You're supposed to have somewhat of a load securement anyways. Um, outside of your automatic locks believe it or not like dry corn has more weight against the gate than if you had dirt once dirt gets put into place it'll kind of stay there stay in one spot 
uh, pea stones, stuff like that is a little denser as far as, well, not denser, but it's more flowable. And that puts a lot of pressure on the gate as well. So along with the mechanical locks, we have a set of pneumatic locks. And that's what this, uh, what, that's what these are. And we'll show you how that works here in a second. There's a uh, air cylinder underneath the body. And all the air cylinder does is it just runs the mechanism back and forth. It's a cam over design. Get a light out here. So we got the back side of the latch there hooked to the control rod going across. And then when we go into the lockup position, it'll cam over. Meaning once it gets above the center of that rod, the, the only way for it to open is to have this go right around the other way. And, and what that would do is it would actually uh, lock it rather than uh, open it again. So I ended up putting a stopper in there so that this rod can only go so far. Once it gets up past center, I don't want it to go any farther because then the uh, cylinder, the air cylinder is gonna wanna go the other way and we don't want that. So what we have is an eight inch pneumatic cylinder mounted in well, you could mount this anywhere. You could actually have it mounted over here on the side. Well, yeah, you could have it mounted uh, right here if you wanted to. But we have this in the center. And then prior to uh, putting this all together, we uh, put a hole in the sill so that we could put a bearing on each side. So we're using an inch and a quarter cold roll uh, for the rod. And then the bell crank here is hooked to uh, the center of the rod. And that is, of course, hooked to the pneumatic cylinder. Now, once this goes in the lockup, um, the gate will be locked until you put air pressure back on the cylinder to extend it out. It's fully retracted right there. And then you can see that the jaws are open. Now when we, if we were to have air on this cylinder, which I, I should have an air hose hooked up to it to show you, but we're going into the closed position. Now it has cammed over and the cylinders, we can unhook the cylinder. We're gonna unhook it, just to demonstrate this. So we've got the cylinder unhooked and if you lost air pressure, the gate is still gonna stay locked because this mechanism has cammed over. In other words, it is this lobe here is brought beyond center and in order for it to open, it's pulling on this rod. In order for it to open, it, it would have to go back that way or it has to come back around this way. It can't come down because it's got too much pressure on it. Right now it's pulling to go around that way and we've got that stopper on here. And we'll demonstrate how strong of a setup this is. And I gotta put, a, put you guys on a spot here. I gotta look for a bar, actually. I gotta put you guys right like this. So I've got a pry bar here. And I'm gonna try to get in on this lock assembly. And I'm not gonna be able to uh, run that lock. Now if we just reach in underneath here and pull this rod, that unlocks it. And we can go into lock up again. And that pneumatic lock assembly is locked. Now uh, these parts that I've got are from Buyer's product company. This uh, 5 8 rod and yoke. Uh, you can buy that as a kit. However, we have to lengthen this rod. It's it's short by about two inches. Now I could have this rod here, the pivot rod, back a little farther, but I like uh, putting it in right there. Now this is something that we kind of designed in-house with this 
rod here cut and welded it looks kind of crude but it works and then in the event that these locks get a little loose there is some adjustment here to this lock assembly you would just take this bolt here out and adjust the threaded rod go a half a turn then put it back together and that would tighten things up so we got the same setup over on this side over here and um this is got bearings on here that we got uh, greasable bearings and then um everything works quite well this setup works real good for um oh silage for example and you're running across rough fields it's just annoying hearing that gate whack against the back of the truck we really don't need to lock the gate for haylage or corn silage but these gates sometimes do open up just a little bit our gates a little heavier than everybody else's and we're hinging it farther forward too some of the other silage bodies that you see built their hinge is back farther and their gate is lighter and that their gates will open up uh, if they don't have a lock mechanism on them so we're going to go ahead and set this back down on the floor and then what i'm going to do is cut the marker light holes in it down through the rub rail and we need to go around it with a wire wheel get it cleaned up and then we can paint it but the uh the lock the tailgate locks it takes a fair amount of time if you're off by an eighth of an inch nothing works so you you have to be precise on getting that bell crank on there in the right spot because you have to have travel still left in the cylinder so that when that bell crank gets to the lock position you have to be able to have that cylinder forward far enough so that it will run that mechanism in the lock position and then you have to have enough throw on it so that when you open it it the jaws are out of the way enough to allow the gate to get out of the out of the uh lock mechanism there so we better get this down on the floor i'm going to take that air cylinder off and we'll and when we go to install this box we can put the cylinder back on uh then i just don't want overspray to get on it and whatever else like that so let's get things ready to paint and we'll join back up with you after we get the marker light holes cut in and the uh wire wheeling done Alright, now we just got to go down through and pick up all our pieces. Some of them have fallen inside that tube. So we need to get a magnet and pull them out. And then we'll go around it with a wire wheel, get it cleaned up so we can get it primed and painted. 
So we've got 13, lucky number 13, uh, 13 marker lights on each side. And then we've got five, three, three across the back. Uh, this lower corner one's got to be red. The rest of them have to be orange. And um, they got the cluster three in the center. Two stop turn lights, one reverse on each side. And uh, yeah, we've got a couple of these that didn't fall out. This one in particular right here. So we'll have to go through and pull them out of there so that when we go to wire it, these pieces aren't in the way. So let's get a magnet, peel them out of there. Well, we have this all ready to prime and paint. I went around like you seen earlier and I call them uh, holes in there for the marker lights. Now I spent two hours going around it with a wire wheel on the big Milwaukee grinder. And then we ended up spraying it down with paint thinner. And me and Sarah just got done wiping all of that off. We sprayed it down with paint thinner to get any of the oily residue spots off of there because the paint is not going to stick to anything that is oily or dirty. So we've got everything cleaned up. I would like to have a box this color right here. I think that is just a cool looking color, the raw iron like that. If you could clear coat it and guarantee it to stay just like that, that would be pretty cool. What do you think? Like you like it? Yeah. So we're going to get Sarah painting here. She's going to work on the inside. I'm going to work on the outside. We're going to run around it first with the primer. We need to let that dry and then we'll go around with the top coat. We're going to paint this black. We're going to be using a black primer and a black paint. Uh, we are actually using, oh, um, I don't even know what the heck this is called. Dell Fleet Essential Epoxy Primer. And then the paint that we're going to be using is a um, polyurethane paint. So it's expensive stuff. We want this. We want to preserve this. We do not want the paint to lift off of it. Because once the paint lifts off, then that's when you start to see the metal rust. So we'll get this back end primed, then we'll raise the tailgate up, put a safety prop across the top of the box so that Sarah can get inside. She'll work on the inside, I'll work on the outside. It'll take us about an hour to an hour and a half or so to get the primer on there. Then we'll let that sit for a little while and then we can uh, throw the paint on. So, we better get after it here. We've got a basketball game to go to tonight. Mm -hmm. And I gotta put down the camera and we gotta get moving. Yes. We are just starting to get the primer on. Sarah's gonna work on the inside and I'm gonna go ahead and work on the outside. She's using just an individual paint cup and I'm gonna be using the pressure pot here that holds two and a half gallons and I can get a lot more done with that. That quart container, you're just all the time filling that up. But we better get moving here. We'll join back up with you once we get it completely primed. There's not much to see during this whole process. And if I leave the camera out, it's going to get overspray on the lens. You ain't going to be able to see anything anyway. All right, we have the base coat applied. Sarah's got the inside done. What we're gonna do is we're going to paint the inside first. We'll paint our way out, do the tailgate. Then we'll start on the outside of the body and we'll do the backside first and then we can put the gate down 
and kind of walk away from the back end of it and paint ourselves around the silage body itself. So we used a um, primer, a black primer. Now we're going to be going over it with black paint. Uh, this paint, or this primer rather, went on real nice. And this is the first time I have used uh, this particular product. Uh, the guy I buy my paint from, he was working at Napa, and we were using Martin Senior paints prior to this job here. Now he's taking another job, and he's selling PPG products, and that's what this is here. This is a PPG um, primer, and we're going to be using PPG polyurethane. It's an expensive top coat that um, will last a long time on this silage box with the price of materials being where they are today you want to preserve this metal um, we want to get it to last as long as we can get it to last so we'll start spraying on the old top coat well there you have it we've got the uh, silage boxes all painted we're actually into the next day and we're going to sign off from this video here and we're going to start our next project which is going to be this mixer wagon so with that being said that's going to do her for this video so we'll catch you at the next one um we'll come back to this and uh after we get this project here done and the next video is probably going to be what working on the mixer wagon and they'll just have to wait and see what we're going to be doing to it when we get to it right so we got to get to it huh yeah all right take it easy folks we'll catch you at the next one and uh you'll have to guess as to what we're going to be doing to the old cow mixer. Take it easy, folks. Thanks for watching.